Hello, this is Overlord Bo, and we're back. Today, we're going to be covering in our top five beginner mistake series, we'll be covering the cruisers. As I've said before in the, my previous beginner guides video uh, in DDs, that today we'll be covering the cruisers, and later on in another uh, uh, series, I'll be covering the BBs, CVs, submarines, and so on and so forth. If you guys notice any mistakes that I do not mention, definitely in the comments down below. Uh, as this information we use to help teach other people mistakes that they may be ma making as well to help them get better over time. If you guys also have any questions or concerns about the five mistakes that I do mention, definitely write those in the comments as below and I'll go over them uh, as soon as I can whenever I am able to read the comments. Anyways, let's hop right into the top five mistakes I've seen in World Warships. The first mistake that I noticed a lot in World of Warship for Cruisers is going broadside or not angling enough. Now, we've all seen the Omaha that just blows up at the start of the match, and 90% of the time is because he showed broadsides in any battleship. As a cruiser player, you want to keep track of any BBs on your side of the map at all times. You want to make sure you avoid being broadside when you are detected. Instead, try to be turned out in kind position. You want to make sure you're angled to any BB shells that may come your way. This way, BBs are less likely to hit your citadel and cause major damage. Hiding if you need to turn broadside for whatever reason. Do it while you're not spotted. If you can't, then time to turn when the BB's guns are reloading. So in this particular thing, I was going to show the wrong way of doing it, which I just did now, and now I'm going to show the right way. So, in this situation, I'm going to show you what happens when you first get caught bow in. So, I'm going to start the engagement while going bow into the BB. Now, you want if you are caught bow into a BB, you want to make sure you're staying at an angled position to where you're able to do a turn in to kind of do a drift to dodge the shells. Do not just sail perfectly straight because it'll also be harder for you to turn out when you do need to turn out. Now, as you can see here, as he does his salvo, I do a slight turn in to reduce the amount of damage I take. Be able to do like a little bit drift to dodge the shells. Now, as the shells are reloading, I am now doing a turn out to be able to then get into a cutting position away from him to be able to get further distance, which makes him less accurate, and to be able to get a proper angle on him to be able to take less damage. Now, just because you angle to a battleship doesn't mean you're going to take less damage all the time. Uh, in less tanky cruisers, you can still take a lot of damage by getting the shells up your rear. As you can see there, he did do a lot of damage to me still. But in the end, he still didn't do as much as he would have battles just sitting broadside. Now, when you are cutting away from battle, you definitely want to use your throttle juking as well. Normally, stay around maybe full, go to half. You never want to just go full stop when you're trying to cut away. You're trying to get as far away as possible. If you if you go from full and you go to about half, you'll do a little bit of a turn to be able to slow down and dodge the shells is the way I do it anyway. But everyone has their own preference. You don't have to slow down all the way to half or a fourth. You can always go to three fourths instead, but you're just trying to do a little bit of a dodge, a little wiggle to make sure that you don't just take a full amount of damage uh, whenever the battleship does shoot you. The next common mistake that I see is opening up at the wrong time. From my experience at shooting cruisers to my favorite ship, the Fuso, uh, a lot of newer players start shooting too early. Either they farm from max range and cannot hit anything, or they aren't angled and take citadel hits before turning out. Now, before you start attacking, make sure you're angled and in range to hit your targets. Remain in the stealth to get closer and then turn out before you start attacking. Uh, you, you can also use islands to help you approach without being detected. For most mid-tier cruisers, tier 5 through 8, the sweet spot of where you should be fighting lies between 9 through 13 kilometers. Pirate cruisers is typically a fighting around 11 through 16 kilometers, but this can change depending upon the situation and what ship you are in. So in this current situation, you can see I did a little bit of turnout. I did a, I started shooting way before I started my turnout. And if I was in any other cruiser, this Montana would have dev struck me. I was really surprised that he didn't, but the Nevesky does sometimes have pre-trolley armor that will just overpin citadels. 
Now in this circumstance, uh, I'm going to be using a Napoli this time. As you can see, I spot the battleship. I get into a proper kiting position where I'm starting to turn out. And as I'm about in the middle of that turnout is where I start to, then I start to engage where I'm already at that turnout angling so that the battleship isn't going to be able to get that broadside citadel that he could possibly get on me. So I'm already in a nice cutting position, already angled up to him so he'll do less damage to me already at the start of the fight. So I already have the advantage in this situation. As you can see, I do a slight little turn there, slow down, dodge his salvo there. That is about the proper way to engage with a battleship that's pushing you. Like if you're trying to open it up and then do a nice where they push at you. It is a nice little situation to do as well. With the Napoli as well, you can also smoke up and use your fighter to spot if you're close enough to them. But be careful of this though, because if you get within about 8.6 kilometers, I believe, is the smoke fire penalty for Napoli's that they, they will be able to spot you uh, within that range if you are shooting within the smoke. Just a little bit tidbit there uh, for any of you Napoli enjoyers. The third most common mistake that I see is over committing to islands. Now this mistake is very common with playing with Des Moines class ships or with a Petro or Mosfa or other ships of that nature where you're always wanting to be near islands most of the time with those certain ships. A lot of for this playstyle is most often seen though with the US cruisers since they're also some of the squishiest. So starting to go over this, uh, I'll be showing you the wrong way of doing this with the island cover and then the right way. So let's do the wrong way first, and then you guys do the right right after. Now, the US cruisers, they're definitely good at using islands for cover, but many players think they must make their last stand on one Pacific rock, or they stay too long before they realize and they become trapped from the enemy encircling them. And pretty much once the enemy outflanks you, you're done. You're not able to escape. You're gonna get pushed in hard. They're gonna ram a shaft and you're pretty much done, you're dead. So you always gotta make sure you gotta be careful of your flanks when choosing your islands. No, oh, but it'll only, and this will protect you from one direction. So you gotta keep an eye out on the mini map to see if enemies are trying to flank you or go around. Because a lot of times the enemy BB will try to crawl up the flanks and try to get to your side or they'll push in position more in the middle to get that rod side angle on you if you're on the flank side. So don't be wary of that. Normally, if you're trying to get your shape shoved in, by the enemy, it's, it's about time you run away and gather a, a lot of the time. But a lot of time, a lot of cruiser players wait too long. Realize this, and uh, it's too late for them. They just go overrun and kill. But at the same time, though, if you have a big enemy force trying to push you and you have little support, you can deal with cruisers, of course, but not a healthy BB is punching you in the face. Yeah, especially since US cruisers usually don't have torpedoes. Uh, staying alive means you can come back later to start farming them out. Now in this situation, as you can see, I am on a flank on the 10 line, right? So the only areas that they're able to push you from is from the 10 line, the 9 line, or more in the middle where that sea cap area is. So I'm in a very good defensive position here to where if they start pushing, I can pretty much use the island as good cover. But the thing is though, as you'll see later on in this match, I stay here too long instead of push going further back to the island behind me. Now, that's definitely a smart thing to do, right? I'm already at about half health. I am using the smoke to farm. So in this situation, it's like, oh yeah, you can sit here, smoke, sit in the, use the smoke as cover, farm the battleship to free, right? Well, it's a good idea and all, but at the same time, you have to consider that your teammates not may not be able to last long enough to be able to support you on the flank, which means that you're gonna over you're gonna get overrun soon as your team just leaves you. You have to be wary of that. I did knock out their DD early, which made where my team had a lot easier of a time over here. But as you can see on that mini map, you start to notice their team is starting to move over here, and if they're starting to move over here, that means you're gonna do a big push over here. Just like, okay, it's about time we turn around to get out of here. Nope, I, I'm just trying to showcase the wrong way and I stay here. Instead of rotating back to the to island that's behind me on the 10 line, I still stay in this position. 
I keep on farming their battleship over and over again. And then I start getting, uh, I do start having to deal with the Salem here as well. Salem's do out DPM Des Moines in the end. They do out trade them due to the fact that Salem's have a super heal while Des Moines do not, which means that in this current position, that Salem has the advantage. He has a way, way bigger advantage on me than I have. And at this situation, I should have already been starting to leave, but as you can see there, I'm being shot at from middle because I wasn't paying attention and they started pushing in from the middle of that cap there from C, which I said earlier, this was most likely gonna happen. If you stay in an island position too long and you're on the push side, they're gonna start out flanking you. They're gonna start getting on your side. They wanna kill you. They wanna get you out of there. They wanna be able to push up, do as much damage as they can. So when they have the advantage, teams are always gonna, well, most of the time anyway they're going to utilize having the advantage on their side and they're going to push really heavy with it now i should have already left this situation about two or three minutes now now this match isn't a bad match like i still did a lot of damage i did a lot of support for my team but at the same time i still did like an unnecessary death i didn't need to die here i could have rotated further back use the island cover at the island that's behind me so when they're pushing in i would force them more of a crossfire situation to where if they pushed up they'd have to show broadside to me or they have to show broadside to my enemy back to my allied battleships now in this scenario as you can see i'm moving up to the island section over at C for for the sea cap here i'm moving up right now trying to support my team over at sea i'm getting to a nice island position Moving up. Now, I did just get spotted, so I'm about to pop. Oh, I don't even have to spot. I don't even have to pop radar. All right, cool, cool. I haven't watched this in a while. Specific replays. But yeah, pretty much we're trying to push out their DDs so that there's they're doing less spotting for, for their team. We're able to do more damage to their dudes as they into position. Now already this island position for this particular map is always a very dangerous position to be in because if they get to the 10 line area right away, they're gonna be able to outflank you right away. They start pushing down, you're trapped. You got people shooting you from middle and you have people shooting at you from the 10 line. Normally, I do not suggest being at these island sections unless you plan on leaving very early, which I do plan to do as I'll be showcasing uh, later on in the match. But normally, you don't want to be here unless you have a lot of allied support. If you have a lot of support, then it's fine. But if you don't have a lot of support, I would never suggest being here. Because you got those battleships already, like, right there. They're already they're, they're, they're looking for They're looking for me. They want me already. They're like, ooh, it's a Des Moines here. Tasty. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Normally, it's never a good idea to be here unless you have a lot of support, which in the beginning, it kind of felt like I did, but then I started to notice. I was like, hey, look at the, look at, look at the mini map. Look how many, uh, look, look how many of their team is starting to move over to that 10 line area. They're starting to get in position to push. And I started being like, oh, okay, well, the Montana's, the, the Montana's here. I, I don't know why he's here, but I'm like, all right, cool, he's here. And I was like, you know what? This is a good time to leave. So I started getting to a position to be able to leave. I use the island cover to make sure I'm dark, but they can't spot me. And as I get ready to leave, I'm like, all right, well, this is a good time to leave. I stay here a little bit longer because of the radar. I, I wanted to make sure I didn't get uh, spotted as I was leaving. So I kind of use the island cover to protect me from the BBs. You want, you want to utilize as much of the island cover as, as possible so that you don't just get slapped by anything. You definitely have to make sure of that. Now that the radar is down, I then start getting positioned to leave because I know that if I don't leave now, I'm going to be dead, right? They're starting to push really. They're starting to push a lot more aggressive over here. I'm like, all right, I need to leave. I need to get out of here. So I start leaving the area, making sure I'm watching out for any of the battleship shots that be coming in my way. I also try to do my best to provide support to the Montana that is there. 
and I try to get this DD to, to leave the area as best that I can, but it is kind of rough because there is a Petra right in front of me. So that's never a uh, fun thing to deal with. Yeah, unfortunately, the DD lives here. Like, he barely lives. That dude was so lucky that I, I was not on my A game for these shots. Because if he was, if I was, he would have been dead 100%. But unfortunately, I was not. So, more of a skill issue on my part. Now, I don't show it in the rest of this replay, but my next plan of action is that I go to the island that's right behind me. Like the one that you can see on the mini of where I'm pointed to already. I start heading to that island to help start farming the ships that are going to push down this lane. That's pretty much my next course of action in this. So, I kind of island hop. That's the best thing to do if you're in a ship like a Des Moines, because you can see that the enemy team is pushing really aggressively. You leave the area when they're start about to, about to start doing their push. You go in an island that's nearby that you're able to sit behind and start farming. And that's my suggestion if you're playing a Des Moines for overcame islands. The fourth most common mistake that I see is activating Hydro too late. Now, this can be a same thing with DDs, cruisers, battleships. It doesn't really matter. Anything with Hydro, this, this mistake kind of works for. So, I think this is an all-around mistake. Because some DDs and battleships also have, have Hydro. But the majority of the Hydro-capable ships in this game are still cruisers. Also... You also want to make sure you use Hydro whenever you suspect an enemy DD or cruiser is trying to torp you. Often I see ally ships activate Hydro after they've already been torped, which is kind of useless. Because if you use a Hydro right after someone torps you, they're going to be in that torp reload pretty much all the way up until your Hydro's out. So that means when they torp again, you're going to not have Hydro. So if you get torped, you don't want to hydro after. You want to wait about a minute or a minute or so, and then you use the hydro. So as you can see here in this particular match, I was dubbing into a cap, trying to just showcase it, uh, where I went to a cap without hydro. Whenever I got spotted, I didn't hydro. I was like, okay, cool. That's the wrong way to do it. Now, if you're trying to push into a cap, and you and you get spotted and you say oh, okay there's gonna be a dd nearby that spotted me right and you look at the team list you see okay it's a shima or whatever dd is gonna be whenever you get spotted and you're getting near the cap you want to pop that hydro because their dd is definitely going to try to stop you from going to the cap 100 percent now i don't have any directional way of knowing where this dd is at all he could be left of me right of me right in front of me i have no idea so at this point i'm just having my head on a swivel waiting for the torpedoes to show up anything at all just waiting just trying to figure out where he's going to be at because he did spot me a little bit before the cap so he has to be around the area and there's the torpedoes now i do eat a torpedo like a dunce and that's more of just a skill issue on my part but it helps just show you can mitigate the damage from torpedoes uh, and also just do better to dodge torpedoes. Don't be like me eat torpedoes for breakfast. But you guys will be fine. But yeah, make sure you, make sure to at least pop the hydro. Don't just wait until you get torped to pop it. The final mistake we'll be talking about today is not using AP on broadside targets. Mostly applies to cruisers. Now, while players can get away with only using HD on DDs and AP for battleships, Many beginners miss the opportunity to punish broadside ships with their AP. Heavy cruiser AP shells have enough penetration to rip apart other cruisers under 12 kilometers. Combined with their good AP accuracy, they can easily deal 10 through 20k salvos to other enemy cruisers. Now, babies aren't immune either to this, and a well-placed AP salvo will deal more damage to broadside babies than HG cells. At very close range, under 5 kilometers, you can even aim under the front or back guns and potentially land Citadel hits. Now, light cruisers are a bit weird and mostly dependent upon which BB you're shooting at, but some BBs, like the high-tier Russian BBs, are too heavily armored and are better off just spamming HC even when broadside. Others, like the Japanese BBs, they can shoot the upper belt and farm more damage against cruisers. 
CLs can expect to start landing Citadel hits at 6 through 8 kilometers, the closer the better. Otherwise, AP to the broadside will still do a lot of damage, but be ready to switch back to HE once the cruiser angles. Now, for a general rule of thumb, if you have a broadside battleship in front of you, you normally want to, if you're close enough to where you can shoot at the bow or the aft of AP, you'll do dead pen damage to them normally. But if you aim it too far in toward the midsection, you're not going to pen at all and you're just going to do uh, no citadel damage. You're not going to do citadel damage unless you have high enough pen, kind of like a Petro does or a Castilla, they do as well. But I'm trying to showcase here in the circuit. So in the first replay you watched, it was HE only Des Moines. In the second one was the AP Des Moines against the Minnow. Now this is an actual fight between a Des Moines and a Minnow. Whereas you can see I'm switching between HE and AP uh, when he's going broadside or when he's going bow in. And since Des Moines does have imprint, improved pen angles for the AP, it's very important you know when to be able to do it. Now, the next thing here is now this is the Des Moines versus Des Moines fight, which is a lot more difficult since it, Des Moines also has, has AP and HE. So as you can see, since he's bowing, I'm trying to knock out the guns. Normal, like normally in a Des Moines fight, you're trying to knock out the guns first, which can be kind of difficult at the distance. So you're just trying to get that fire damage going first. So you get that HC, try to get a fire going. Um, unlucky for me though, I didn't really get that many fires. So he had the advantage in that regard. He was also able to knock out my gun early, which made it where I had DCP'd uh, that, uh, also to put out the five. So he had the advantage in that regard. Now I did start knocking out his guns around this distance, which gave me the advantage. He also switched to EP as well. But normally in these kind of situations where you're doing a 1v1 with another Des Moines or like a Salem, a lot of the time it's going to result in one of two ways. One, either you're going to ram each other, or two, you do some kind of rods drive by broadside or you'll just be reversing the other one's trying to ram you. Now here I did try to dodge the ram, but uh, he kind of poked me with his rear end there, so I'll rip in that regard. But anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns or have any tips or anything you want to put down in the comments, you can. But this is a roller bow. Thank you all for watching and hope you guys enjoyed these kind of little mini series on the top five mistakes, beginner mistakes I see in World of Warships. But thank you guys all again for being here. And I will talk to you all later.